Good evening, everyone, and a Cade Mila Falsha. You are all very welcome to the last in the National Archives online public lecture series for 2022. Uh, my name is Elizabeth McAvoy, and I'm the archivist with responsibility for education and outreach in the National Archives. And on behalf of the office, we're delighted to welcome you here tonight and also to welcome our guest speaker, Georgina Scali, who will present on 20 ways to find a townland and other hints and tips. But before we begin, I'd like to go through just a few housekeeping details so that you can engage with our event. Audience cameras are off as are mics, but we actively encourage your participation in tonight's talk using the webinar's Q&A function. Georgina's talk will run for roughly 50 minutes with about 10 to 15 minutes for Q&A at the end. You'll have the opportunity to submit your questions during the talk. So please type them into the Q&A box at the bottom of the control panel because we won't be monitoring the chat box for them. We'll accommodate as many questions as time permits and obviously depending on how many uh, Georgina wishes to take. So apologies in advance if we don't get around to answering yours. We're recording tonight's talk and we'll make it available after the event on our YouTube channel as we have done with all our online talks since early 2021. We'll also be live tweeting the talk, so please like or retweet our posts at NAR Ireland. So a few words about tonight's talk. Finding the townland where one's ancestors were from in Ireland is the goal of many family history researchers. And given that there are over 60,000 townlands in Ireland, finding the correct one can sometimes prove a major stumbling block. In tonight's lecture, Georgina Scali will provide an insight into some of the better known and some lesser known sources for finding townlands in Ireland. Georgina will also examine different administrative divisions and demonstrate how townlands fit into each. And she will outline 20 sources for townlands, what they are, and most importantly, where to find them. So about tonight's speaker, a, Georgina has been involved with genealogy for the past decade and has been a member of Accredited Genealogist Ireland since 2016. Prior to her career in genealogy, she was a practicing field archaeologist, excavating and carrying out research assignments nationwide. Georgina runs her own company, Irish Genealogy Services, and welcomes inquiries from all around the world. In addition to research for clients, Georgina also works alongside her colleagues in the Genealogy Advisory Service in the National Archives, which is a free consultation service for members of the public. So Georgina, over to you. Grand, thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, I'm just sharing my screen now, I'm trying to share That's it at perfect. the moment. So um, it's just to get it into PowerPoint mode or into a screen sharing mode. So it's screen share. Screen sharing. Yep, that, that's so fine, is, Georgina. Is that, that's, is that actually yeah. working there? We can see that, yeah. I can see that, so that's all good. That's okay, all good. I'll just click ahead and see, can I can I go in? That's That's it, just testing there. So uh, good evening, everybody, and thank you, Elizabeth, for that introduction. And um, just to let you know, I'll be mentioning a lot of different websites and URLs and addresses. So there's no need for anybody to take them down because you literally miss everything. So I have um, in the old days it called a handout. It's a printout, basically, and it's the last slide I'll show. But because this the, the talk is being uh, recorded, like it's available to, to everybody. To, to download their own or to, to go and take a, a photograph or screenshot in, in their own time. So um, just to get started, um, there's more or less three sections uh, to the talk. Uh, I'll just introduce only a couple of slides about why it can be so problematic to um, find the correct townland and um, just a short introduction as well to the various administrative divisions that, that really you need to know uh, not particularly in depth, but you need to know what they mean and how to navigate between them. And then the bulk of the lecture is on uh, the 20 different sources for finding townlands in Ireland. So 
we'll go straight into it. So basically, this sums up the talk. If you already know it, how do you know it's the right one? And if you don't already know it, you need to find it. So what is it? It's a townland. So lots of people say, just look up at the list of townlands and everything will be fine. But I think everybody sitting there at home knows exactly it, things are not just as simple as that. So a couple of slides here just to explain why it is a little bit more complicated than that. So basically in Ireland, you have in excess 60,000 townlands. Most databases say between 60 and 64,000 64, townlands. And there's a reason why it varies so much. Townlands vary in size from a few fields to thousands of acres. Townlands do not always respect boundaries of large administrative units. Townland spellings can vary from one source to another and spellings can and they do change over time. I mean, basically townlands have their origins in pre-Anglo-Norman Ireland. So you're talking about a history of 800 years. Um, so it's not surprising that things change over that period. The same townland names occur in the same and in different parishes and counties across the island of Ireland. And just looking at that last point there, this is, we'll see more about this particular source later on. This is from one of the indexes uh, to townlands in Ireland. And you can see here, this is a townland called Leitrim. Everybody knows that Leitrim is a county in Ireland, but Leitrim is also the name of a townland. And you can see here from this top one here, just down to this section here, you have 26 examples of a townland called Leitrim. Those 26 examples are in 15 different counties. So there's actually three townlands in two counties and neither of those counties are County Leitrim. It's actually three, three townlands, County Down and County Longford. There's four counties with two uh, Leitrims in townlands called Leitrim and there's the rest, there's just one each. But even at that, and this is not uncommon, Leit, like the, the, this is just one example. There's, there's loads and loads of examples, but there's multiple townland names of the same name in different counties. And what's also important down here, you can see that there's also these added descriptions, big, east, lower, middle, more, north and south, and obviously Leitrim town as well. So a lot of times, if you're searching uh, on a database and you put in Leitrim, most databases will not bring up these options. They will only bring up the, 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 the 26 single word townland name. So it's just important to keep these other options in mind, and it's not just these descriptive terms. And um, the next slide is just an amalgamation of all the other additional terms that can be attached to a townland name. So you've got the ones we've just seen there east, west, north, south, middle, lower. These would be the more common ones, but there is also hill, glee, domain, far near, big, great, little, marshes, common, bog, and also actually quite a lot in northern. Um, Northern counties, there's the description of black under and white. So it's just important just to bring your awareness to the fact that if you can't find just a single name, there's always the option that potentially it has a further descriptive term attached. So just moving on, just to look at the different uh, administrative divisions in Ireland, and basically it's looking at the structures that are important to understand in Irish genealogical research. And it's really, it's kind of important to understand how they overlap or they don't, the case may be. And really understanding these administrative divisions, it goes a long way to understanding Irish genealogical records really. And as I say, you don't need to understand them in depth, it's just understanding the terms. So looking at, which most people I think would be familiar with, this is a civil birth certificate. And a lot of times you're gonna find a townland name written on the civil birth certificate. In, in this case, I've just picked a few examples where the townland name is, 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 is perfectly clear. The child was born, this is the date, and this is in the address, Shanna Keel. This is the father's address, that's the name of the townland again, and the informant, which happens to be the father in Shanna Keel. So that's where you're gonna get the townland name. And there she is again in another uh, civil birth certificate or civil, civil birth certificate. So you're going to have to 
more than likely want to find out what parish that child was uh, baptized in. And you're going to have to find out what parish Shanakeel is in. Also, you've got to understand on a civil birth certificate, which is the same probably for a marriage and a death certificate, what, what is this? A superintendent registrar's district, registrar's district uh, in Castlemaine, you can see here, and it's the Union of Tralee. So it's really just to understand these titles don't necessarily have to understand an awful lot about the background of them. So that's just giving you an idea of what you, you, you generally do find and what you need to know to find out more. So I think most people are aware in Ireland that there's countries divided into provinces, four provinces, 32 counties. It's 330 baronies, approximately 2,600 parishes, and as we say, 60,000 club townlands. So that's one system, but the three systems we're going to look at tonight so the, for uh, looking at trying to find different townlands, it's the parish or diocesan system, the poor law system, and the civil registration system, which we've just seen an example of with that birth certificate or the birth record. As I say, this isn't a full description of each one of these or the history of them. It's really just to understand how the townland fits into each one and how they relate to each other. And what's significant about it, at the bottom of all these systems, the lowest, the lowest administrative unit is the townland. So looking first just at the parish or diocesan system, which you use obviously for baptisms, church baptisms, marriages and burial registers. So generally the Roman Catholic uh, and Church of Ireland have just divided into those two because they're the greatest denominations in, in the country. So there's four ecclesiastical provinces in the Roman Catholic Church. In the Church of Ireland, there's two. They're subdivided into 26 Roman Catholic dioceses, and then uh, in the Church of Ireland, uh, 12 Church of Ireland dioceses, subdivided again into your Roman Catholic parishes, and then into Church of Ireland parishes. Again, the bottom tier, the townland at the very end. The next, system is just looking at the poor law system. Again, we're really just looking at the titles. Um, so the poor law system, it was enacted under the 1838 Poor Law Act, which established workhouses in Ireland. And initially what they did is they picked various market towns uh, and they made 130 units called poor law unions. They were later actually extended and there was up to 168 at, at a certain point. Initially, those poor law unions were divided into district electoral divisions, of which was nearly three and a half thousand. Most people will know that division because this is the 1901-1911 census, which is online. Uh, they're based around the DEDs. But before 1838 and the poor law system was introduced, the censuses were based on parishes and boundaries. Probably uh, in an attempt to try and regulate and manage the, the, the unions and the district electoral divisions, in 1851, under the Medical Charities Act, there was another subunit uh, created, and they were called dispensary districts, and there was approximately 100, or 720. So they come between the poor law union and the DEDs. And again, at the bottom, the lower tier in this uh, administrative division, uh, is the townland. So that's the second system. Uh, and then that's just a, an example of the, the census, which you might be familiar with. But this is from 1831. And you can see there just the, the people's names, the townland, house number, barony, parish and county. And the later census, the 1901, you're going to not have these divisions here in the parish of Bar the baron. It's just on the DED in the county. And obviously with the townland name here. So just looking at the third uh, administrative division, which is basically called the civil registration system. That was introduced in 1845 when uh, registration for non-Roman Catholic marriages was introduced to Ireland and it was extended to all births, marriages and deaths in 1864. They did not create new units. So basically they piggybacked, to say it, uh, kind of discreetly on the systems that were already created by the poor law system, but they did call them different uh, names. 
So your poor law union is equivalent to your civil registration district and or slightly confusingly, they're also called superintendent registrar's district. And that was the label or the title that we saw on that child's civil birth record back a few slides. Now there's 168 uh, civil registration districts, which equates to the number of the maximum number of poor, poor law unions. Again, um, another subdivision, a lower subdivision is the registrar's district. Again, that would have been seen, you would have seen that on that civil birth certificate. There's 720 uh, of these districts, which equates to the dispensary district on the poor law system. And again, at the bottom of that, you've got your townland. So when you put those three systems together, on the left here, you've got the parish or diocesan system broken into the province, the diocese, the parish, and you've got your townland. This is the poor law system from 1838, poor law unions, dispensary district, uh, DEDs, uh, district electoral division for townland, and then you've got your civil registration system, obviously called here, this is the civil registration district, uh, or the superintendent registrars, which is equivalent to your poor law union. So these, you know, once you see these titles, you will now, you know, if you did before, that's fine. But if you didn't understand them, it, it allows you to, to kind of greater understanding of what they actually mean and which what, what you need to find out to, to actually get down to the lowest tier, which is the townland. And again, this is the registrar's district of which there are 720, and that equals to the dispensary districts. So that's a very quick overview. As I say, um, it's, it's not going into anything too deeply, but it is giving you an understanding of the, um, the titles, really the labels that you need to know. So moving just into the 20 different sources um, for townlands, they're in my order of preference. And it's not necessarily that number one is the best, number 20 is the least best. It's, it's not that at all. They all bring something new to the table. Um, I would always recommend checking at least three sources. Uh, it's not necessarily the first three. Uh, people will identify with ones that they like of their own personal preference. But uh, each source generally has something to something new or something slightly different. Time is very limited uh, in the short talks. So I will probably look at the first 10 in a little bit more detail. I, even with those, I'm only going to mention some aspects on how each resource can be used. Um, literally each, each website we're gonna look at, it deserves a lecture in its own right. So this is very much a, a quick overview, but at least it'll give you the basis to go back and search further if you're interested in, in any of them. So moving on to my number one, um, this is what's called Townlands and Poor Law Unions. And just to give it its full title, it's a reprint of poor law union pamphlets uh, as they were in the General Register Office in 1885 with an introduction and six appendices related to Irish genealogical research. They were published only in 1997 by this genealogist, George Hanahan. And really what they are is pamphlets that list the town land within the superintendent registrar's district alphabetically by registrar's district, DED, which is the district electoral division, and then by parish, along with the name of the barony. So it's got all three el or elements of the three administrative divisions that we were looking at it, looking at previously. And I re regard it really as the most comprehensive source by which to identify a townland in Ireland. And it's, it's not every townland. I use this particularly when I can't find it in a lot of there may be quicker websites to search or this isn't actually a website i'll show you now in a minute how you access it but it was it was actually very far seeing of this man john george hannon who's a genealogist and he's an american genealogist he realized that there was only a handful of these pamphlets circulating and and he actually self-published he got permission and went through various hoops and reels to get it done but he persisted and he published self-published these pamphlets in 1997, um, which was uh, definitely a, a win for, for all of us. Um, this is just in its hard copy. There's various options where you can get it. Uh, it's a hard copy. You can get it as a CD or up here, higginsonbooks.com. Uh, I think this is personal. I think he's, he actually 
did died last year, but it's at his publishing company, so you can you can buy it on the internet. So that's this is just an example of it's a page taken from just a randomly from the, from the source, and um, so it's just to explain how it's broken up. It's in it's it's divided by poor law unions. Uh, it also provides quite a lot of information about the, the population and the acreage acreages and the size of those, each of the units uh, at the time, or here it's given as 1881. So you can see here, this is the registrar's district, the DEDs, Barnley's Parish and Townlands. So they, they've just been abbreviated. This is the registrar's district, giving you its area and its population. This is the DED, Carrick Macross, again, area population, this is the Barnley and the parish, and these are the townland names. So it's extremely useful. Uh, I like the way it's just done out, it, divided into the parish units, because if you have some idea that it's in a district electoral division, say of, of, of this one here, you can actually just scroll down and check, because obviously there's quite a few parishes in the one DED. So uh, as I say, it's a really good um, source. It's not that widely, known about i think i think genealogists generally do but a lot of the your you know people working at home i found anyway they don't necessarily know about it and it's a bit of a revelation when you do because it really is as i say uh, one of the kind of prime sources so um actually it's just to say also it's i think i said it's a cd it's a hard copy book and um when you actually get the cd if you buy the cd which i use and they have a find search option box on it, which is also very useful. So just moving on to the second source, um, which I think a lot of people will be familiar with, it's called the General Alphabetical Index to the Townlands, Towns, Parish and Baronies of Ireland. There are three editions of this. This is the, the one I think is the most widely used it's based on the census for the year 1851 but it was published in Dublin in, by Toms uh, in 1861. The other editions are based on the 1871 census, and that was published in 1877, and um, there's the 1901 census of Ireland. What's interesting about the earlier uh, edition is that there was a commissioner's a census established in 1861, so many of the townland names were standardized after that, and there's quite a few, sort of, called non-official place names included in that earliest edition. Um, just to note, they didn't uh, record by DEDs in it. So it's, it's just a little kind of anomaly. Um, again, I would regard that as an extant source and it's encompassing uh, elements of all three of the administrative systems. So it's very much one of the go-to sources. Um, this is just an extract from the um, the index, or it's a little bit out of uh, focus here on the left, but these are just a list of the townland names, uh, which is very easy to scroll through when you have an idea of the spelling. Um, and as you know, an awful lot of townland names are spelled phonetically, so this can be very useful just to scroll through literally all the C's or whatever townland uh, uh, letter that you're looking for. Obviously, it's divided then into county, barony, parish, and the poor law union. So all in all, very useful source. Um, you can get it in hard copy, you can get it online. Um, most libraries, the National Archives of Ireland, National Library, have several copies, and I think most libraries would have them. These two editions are actually online at this website, which is Documenting Ireland, uh, People, Places and Migration, very useful website. Um, and as I say, many of the other databases, which we will see in the next couple of slides uh, they use one or other of these editions um, so it's always worth checking which one they use because of those little anomalies between them so moving on to uh, number three this is the website of somebody called shane wilson uh, it's a very interesting website shane who i don't know at all uh, but i use his website certainly it's um he seems to be interested in townlands, particularly maps and directories, and an awful lot else. He's got great uh, resources on, on his website. And in fact, he has, uh, I think he gave a lecture to the Genealogical Society of Ireland a couple of years ago, and it's up on YouTube. 
well worth looking at because I say there's a lot more on this website that than I'm mentioning now here. But what I like particularly about this is it's quite a responsive website. But while other websites have good wildcard and soundex options, he just seems to have the most, and I, it can that that is what's very useful when you're trying to find a particular townland. It's actually based on the index that he used was carried uh, was the transcript was carried out by somebody called John Broderick, and um, again from another website that we that we look at another source, and um, it was uh, he, he went under the name Shan Ruud. So Shane has uh, just upgraded a little bit on that version. So that's you can find it again. This will be on the the printout at the end. So um, this is his home page. I say there's an awful lot on there's some very good resources on which are all listed on the left hand side but this is really what we're interested here this townland database and there's also registration district map which you can browse but looking at that townland database this is when you press into that this is what you get the townland database now these are all different search options we don't have time to go through each one of them so i'm just going to look at this top one here which is the basic townland uh, database so when you press into that you select it and um, you've got the option here to sort the results by townland by parish barony uh, or union of the county you can filter your search by obviously the county these pretty much the same units i've just put in galway here and this is what i like about here there's there's a lot of options to search um, when you, particularly when you don't know the full spelling of the townland. So in this instance, I just put in three letters here, G-A-L, and I selected that it contains, because I think we've all come across, you find something, you think this is great, and um, of course you go to read the townland name, and there's a big blob of ink right in the middle of it, or the, the, the hand that wrote it is, 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 is not particularly good or clear, so all you can make out is a couple of letters. So you put in your couple of letters here and you select the contains, the search for anything that contains these three letters. So this will bring up all the townlands that contains GAL, for instance. It will arrange by parish, barony, union, and by county. Because I've obviously selected Galway, but you can leave that open. So very, very useful. Other websites do something similar. But as I say, you know, I, I like the way this is done. Um, and again, just looking here, looking at the registration district, Clifton, and um, these are all the districts here. And um, sorry, this is just in Galway. These are all the registration districts uh, of which Clifton is one. It also tells you what county they're in because I think looking at it earlier, the, the, the districts, they can overlap into different counties. And these are all the dispensary districts. So if you press into any of these, you can select them. And that's what I did there, select Clifton. Uh, go into that, it brings up this very good, colorful, clear map. Um, it also brings up the parishes and the number of townlands that are in each of the parish. So again, you select one of those and it brings you to a list of all the townlands that are in the parish. So extremely good. This is just a very quick overview of uh, what's, what's on there. But it's, as I say, it's a very good, it's free and it's a very responsive website. So um, that's anyway, and uh, I, my, my number three. Uh, moving on to number four, this is uh, John Grenham's website, which is not really that dissimilar to, to, to Shane Wilson's. Um, John Grenham is a genealogist that a lot of people probably know. Uh, it's a very user friendly website. There's a lot of information on a single window. There's some very good maps on it. Um, and again, if you're somebody who likes kind of visually looking at things, it's, it's excellent that he also has good wildcard um, and uh, search facilities. You can put in any sequence of letters or individual letters. So there's also some good additional links, uh, including summary of the search sources for genealogy. You can search by all count, by all of Ireland or by county. And I think his listing is based on this, the first edition, the 1861 edition. He also includes street listings from Dublin, Cork and Belfast. Excuse me. Belfast cities, which is which is useful. Just looking at the homepage of his website, I just put in Clune 
uh, just happens to be a, a website I was or a town plan I was working on. And if you can just you just basically press submit and um, it will bring up a list of all the uh, locations called Clune in the various counties. It arranges them by parish, by polo unit, by registrar's district. And anything that's highlighted in light blue, you can click into and that will give further information. So I just clicked into the parish of Omi. Um, it brings up some interesting information about different names, common surnames, the joining parishes. And this is our list of townlands in the parish of Omi. So it also brings a very useful map side by side, which is always good. So you can kind of locate your, yourself. Um, if you click into these, it brings you to Griffith Valuation, which is a source we'll see later on. And this brings you to the two census, the two available census, 1901 and 11. And an additional, uh, it's very useful, is this summary source for information about sources for this particular parish. So all in all, again, very good website very useful and it's responsive. Uh, number five is called is called loganum.ie and it's the website of the place names database of Ireland. Basically it's a collaboration between the place names branch of the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Creative and Media and Fianta, which is the Irish language school in DCU. It uses maps that are uh, provided by what's called Open Street Map, which is, we see in a, in a later source down a couple of slides. So it's an extensive database, it's some great information on it. It's available, um, place names are available both in English and Irish. It include, includes a sound archive. Um, they are, as I say, translated, place names are translated English to Irish and Irish to English. And um, apart from townlands, it also includes facility on sub townlands and a wide range of other features, such as mountains, rivers, lakes, valleys, uh, roads. You know, there's, there's an awful lot of information on this website. It's, it's free and um, it isn't necessarily the easiest to use, but certainly it is worth persisting. And um, even just when I was looking around for, 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 for this talk, I you know, always investigate a little bit more than maybe previously. So like I found it includes a glossary of words commonly found in Irish place names. As I say, it has a sound archive. There's a lot of historical maps by county. There's a full scan image of John O'Donovan's manuscript and um, a glossary of Irish topographical dictionary, which includes an alphabetical index of various anglicized place name elements followed by their Irish formula translation. And that's only touching the surface of, of what is on this website. So this is just looking at the home page. They bring up a place name of the day, so this will change. So if you log on and, and you know, it doesn't look familiar, it's just because it's they, they change this every day. I just put in this townland here, uh, Valley Forum. And you can, there's other ways to search down here. These are, this is what you click into to find this additional information, or you can have a browse facility. So just looking, if you put in a townland name um, and you press search, it brings you to a map uh, and I've selected here on the outside, you can see counties, baronies, civil parishes, electoral divisions or townlands, I obviously selected townlands, brings you to a townland map. You can zone in uh, on any of the townlands and it will bring up obviously the name but besides various uh, geographical information about it. I wasn't able to get everything onto the one slide so you need to scroll down on this page and it will bring you to an explanatory note, which is basically a summary of the research that they have been doing in the place names database over the years. It's excellent research. It's thoroughly reliable. And um, they go through a lot of the kind of main and also very academic sources that most people wouldn't really have time to, to go through, but they, they, they summarize it here. Uh, in this explanatory note. And they also provide a link to the Ordnance Survey letters from 1837. And um, you can see, you can click into that. And I think they also have, yes, a historical reference. So again, that's going through the references that the people in the database in the, in the commission have found through their research. These, this is Valley 4 and all the different spellings that they have found in the various uh, sources and the sources are listed here. 
with the with the uh, date of the of the source. So all in all, extremely useful information, very reliable. And as I say, I'm only brushing the surface of this of this source of this website. So it's well worth a look and well worth persisting. And um, this is looking at the next one, which is a uh, very good, very popular uh, source. It used to be called jashanrood.com. And basically it is just a, a, a searchable database for uh, the townlands based on the 1861 edition, the index. So it was, I think initially the work of this man who's since deceased, and it's now run by Ed Finn of Newton crosscommon.com website and it's it's under this name the core.com and that's its previous name that it incorporates so very easy to use database i think a lot of people might know it it's got a couple of these search options uh, which are useful and um, and then you can search by the union the barn the civil parish and as i say it's based on the 1861 edition this is the searchable uh, home page it, it's pretty much a website that does what it says in the tin there isn't much more to it, but say it's very useful. Just go in quickly, check. Um, you can just put in whatever you know, whatever, if you know just the civil parish and the county, and then you press in those and it will bring up um, the townland, the list of townlands. But here are, this is the search facilities that you can pick either any one of these that, that suits your needs. So very quick, very responsive. Uh, and say it's it's uh it's it's that's it you know but that's absolutely fine it's, it's very useful so um this is just looking at number seven which was mentioned earlier because it's based on open street map so this is uh, again a very popular website in the last couple of years called just called townlands.ie uh, and it's an interesting project it's basically it's built by a, a community of mappers that contribute all sorts of data. And it's not just about townlands, there's everything. There's uh, roads and cafes and where you can find bus stops and bus stops with shelters. Like it, it's, 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 it's basically built by people for what people believe is needed. I think it was created out of a desire not to be ruled by basically the large corporations, the Googles of this world, because their maps, can be kind of limited. I mean, they're wonderful in one sense, but they are very much uh, not providing an awful lot of the historical information and other information just about generally life in Ireland. And this is worldwide. So it's been in Ireland since 2004. And during that time up to the present day, I think it's about three and a half thousand, uh, basically they're, they're contributors. They enjoy working on maps and they 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 contribute various information and, and, it, and it gets updated as well. Um, even though it is built by volunteers, it seems to be very reliable, some great resources on it. And um, the townlands have been mapped using out of copyright sheets, uh, which have been donated from Trinity College Dublin. It's certainly very user friendly, it's very popular, and it, there's excellent maps, as I say, on it. Like everything else, I'd say use in conjunction with other sources. And what I like, there's these two uh, facilities that are. That are on this website. One is bordering townlands, and another one is the subtownland facility. So I'm just have a quick look. There are loads of ways to search this uh, website. You can just use the search box up here. You can click this, which is alphabetic index of townlands, which literally will list every single townland in Ireland alphabetically. Or you can choose to uh, look at it via the county. So it just happened to be the view I was looking at. So you can see all the Irish counties here divided into barneries, parishes, electoral divisions, the townlands, and interestingly, these sub-townlands. Sub-townlands are defined as townlands where the name still exists, but the actual boundary has been lost. And while you might not think there's that many of them, I think this contributes to the large um, difference between the 60 and 64,000, because you can see, here in Donegal, there's nearly over 1,700 sub-townlands, sub while down here in, I think it's Limerick there, there's 25. So, you know, they are very much well worth searching for. So just looking a little bit further into this, 
I've just picked this at random agards in Canticle Dare. So it's just picking anything just to show you what else is on the on the website. So you can click into that. Gives you the descriptive, the, the size of the townland. And um, then it brings up a, a map. Uh, they're very good maps, as I say. That's the map selected there. If you select any of these, it'll bring it into a single page. Um, and it shows you the townlands where that agar's borders. It'll show you sub-townlands sub if they know about, and there's also links to the census, 1901, uh, 1911, 1901, and into Griffith's valuation. So all in all, it's, it's a really good website. Um, moving on to the next one is the place names of northernireland.org. And uh, basically, this is a Northern Ireland place name project based in Queen's University, Belfast, and they've got assistance from several other parties, um, which is including the Land and Property Services, um, which also be known as the Ordnance Survey, and the Arts and Humanities Research Camp and Forest of Oilga. So they are dealing with approximately nine and a half thousand townlands, and they also deal with lots of other place names apart from townlands. It's very user-friendly, and they have fantastic maps on it. Uh, lots of editions of the Auden Survey maps and other maps, uh, but you do need to sign in. Now it's free to sign in, but this is like into a ge uh, geographical information system. So quite a few websites now I see are asking people to sign in. So it's just a matter of registering it's free. So, so there's lots of search variables on this website. The maps are excellent. Um, you, can, you can search by name. I think you have to put in at least three letters minimum. And there's a current place name search, and there's also an historical place name option search, which is useful. Unfortunately, at the moment, the project has run out of funds, basically, um, but their website is still up and running and available uh, free to use. So hopefully they will get back on track uh, because it is an excellent resource. This is their homepage. There's two ways to get into it, which is the place name search here and also the land unit. So the place name search will bring you to the same place if you just go straight in here. Um, and just looking at what happens when you press on that, this is where you would put in whatever information you're either looking for, or that if you have some information on the parish, the barony, the barony and whatever you put it in on this side, and this is how it's presented. So it's bringing up the place name, not necessarily townland. It shows you where that, uh, item is, it could be, as in this instance, it's talking about a post office, um, it brings them to the townland name here at the barony and the county. It's always worth checking in here, the more information box, if there is more information, a lot of times that's just a map, there can be more additional, additional information based on the research that they have done. And um, just looking at the land unit, which is this one here. So again, you can select whichever land unit you want, county, barony, parish, or townland. Obviously, I pick townlands. And it will bring you up a range of different maps. Excellent maps. And the list of the townlands are here according to whatever county you want, or I just put in all here. So again, if you click in, you scroll into the map, and that will bring you into a high definition uh, version of the map with the name clearly written. You can scan the maps. You can select different map options, different view options. So all in all, you know, an excellent resource. Uh, moving on to the, I think that's number nine, uh, the Tide of Plotman books. And these are available on the National Archives website, nationalarchives.ie. They're available on other um, databases and websites as well. And um, this one is free to use. Uh, what's interesting about the Tide of Plotten books is that they, you know, it's a relatively early source. They were compiled pretty much between 1823 and 37 to determine uh, the amount which occupiers of agricult agricultural holdings over one acre should pay in tithes to the Church of Ireland. They are pre ordnance survey. So again, a lot of names were standardized when the ordnance survey was introduced. Uh, so it's definitely worth, if you're still searching for a, a, a townland, which you can find in some of the later sources, this is one of the earlier sources. 
it's interesting and it's definitely worth noting that the acreages in the tidal plot and books are in Irish or plantation acres, which are quite significantly larger than the statute measure. On the National Archives website, um, where you can find the, the, the books, there's 30 counties listed, 30 counties listed, uh, there's two entries for Leash and, and there's no entries for Antrim and Derry. They actually have a very useful townland browse facility. But what you need to know and be really aware of, this is not a complete comprehensive list of townlands for the first quarter of the 19th century. There's lots of issues in province with the tide of plot and books, like it's, it's, it, it's an incomplete survey. Anyway, this isn't, I won't go into the details about the actual books themselves, but it's, it's just important to be aware that it is not a complete and comprehensive source. Some parishes have been excluded, uh, some some townlands have been misassigned to different parishes um, but saying that it's still worth uh, looking at and again it's quite an easy uh, responsive uh, database to use. Shane Wilson in that uh, first website we looked at he has what's called a tide locator reference which actually just realigns the correct townlands to the correct parish so it's a useful little add-on and um, you can get the hard copy books of the Tide of Plot and Books in the National Archives, and you can also get microfilms uh, of the uh, Plot and Books from the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland in, in the archives. And you get the hard copy books um, there up in, in Prodi in, in Northern Ireland. So just looking at that source a little bit more in depth, this is the home page when you click into the Tide of Plot and Books. There's some um, good information about it. You can, just click the search facility here, or again, you can browse by location. So I've just clicked the browse. It's giving you the counties, listing the counties here, obviously minus one or two that were mentioned. So click into any of those. It will bring you to the various parishes. This is obviously a selected Leitrim. It will bring you to the parishes there. And then you click into whatever one's parish you're interested in, and it lists the townlands. So again, very easy free to use, excellent, but just to be aware of its limitations. So this is number 10 and number 11, and um, I've presented them together because they are very much, they're different dates, but the valuation, the, the valuation office uh, records basically, and the ordnance survey are very much interlinked. So again, this is not a quick summary of the History of the Valuation Office at all, um, or the Ordnance Survey, or Griffith's Valuation. It's really just to give you pointers to know a tiny little bit about the background and where to find um, where to find uh, them as, 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 as particular sources. The Valuation Office was created for basically the person levying tax and property in Ireland, and it was introduced under the 1826 Act. For more or less that time, uh, between 1824 and 1856, there was huge amount of work done. I mean, the valuation office and the records are a vast resource with complex and extensive records. And these, these books, house, field, tenure, and quarter books were created over that period, going right throughout the, the country. And it's just of interest to say that valuations up to 1844 were based on townlands. And post 1844, the valuations were based on tenants. Now, clearly, like we're talking decades of a very extensive um, workings here in the valuation office. So there would have been a, an awful lot of changes occurred on, on how the material was collected and how they decided it would be presented. Um, Francis McGee um, has written a book, I think it was published in 2018, on the archives of the valuation office from 1830. 1865. So if anybody wants to kind of really go in depth into their uh, extensive records, I'd recommend that book. As I say, this isn't what I'm doing here. I'm only just pointing out where you can find the information, but, but just give me a tiny little bit of information about the source. So this is one source, the Valuation House Field Tenure Quarter Books, which is available uh, on the National Archives website. And it's kind of in line with um, the Ordnance Survey as well, because the Valuation Office and the Ordnance Survey were created more or less around the same time. So the 
Ordnance Survey Office was established in 1824, and they began the survey by, um, they undertook a townland survey of the whole of Ireland, or that was how they started initially, and they were to do that at six inches to a mile. As part of that work, uh, John O'Donovan was one of the main, um, the naming experts employed in the survey, and over time himself and other surveyors, they gathered large amounts of information on variant place names. The Irish formed the name, deciding on the name that would go on to the six inch order survey map. And they also examined individual place name details and variants, basically to determine a suitable spelling for each name, which did not already have a standardized English form. Um, and all that information, which is really excellent, was collated into books called name books. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because those name books are presented on this website, which is a free, another free resource. It's the Irish Library website. The name books are presented along with Griffith's valuation, which was part of the valuation records. And a lot of people would be familiar with that, uh, with, with Griffith's valuation for family history reasons. And Griffith's valuation was published between 1847 and 64, but it's, it's, that was its publication dates. They were based on information that was gathered in the earlier years and decades. So you can get these resources on different websites. I like this website because as you say, of the way it's presented and we just have a quick look at, at that now. So looking at, this is the National Archives genealogy, uh, uh, it's their part of their main website is the genealogy section. So this is just looking at where the where you can find the house field tenure and quarter books. So get onto their genealogy page down here. These are all searchable. So click onto that, and this is brings you into um, each of these books. In, you can click on any of those or select them, and it will bring you to some information about them, some background information. And would you click here to search and the search together? as a group. Sorry, yeah. sorry, Georgina, just letting you know it's 10 to seven now, but there's no rush. All right, okay, grand. Thank, Thank you. you. So that's, it's just, that's an easy way to, to kind of get in at them. Um, this is the Ask About Ireland. Uh, I've just put in Farron Redmond. Again, as I say, this is, there's loads of ways to search this website. This is a, a database, our uh, townland I was just working on and when, you put that in, it brings you up to, this is just the different options, the parish, the townland, and you can click into map views or occupants. So this is just, again, looking, this is a, just a transcript. Um, this is obviously the original uh, typescript of Griffith's valuation. And um, you can just see there's one occupier at this time. Uh, and if you had selected the maps, which were back you know, on, the, on the main homepage, What's there's it's bringing up the map option far and Redmond here. It's just on the northwest of Dingle, and you can see up here there are um, show there's map options which are always worth searching. These maps generally are a little bit older than um, I think they're about twenty years older than the original um, valuation. But there's also show name books. So when you select that and you show name books, it brings up these little icons, and these are all different uh, name books for the townlands. So you click in there, and just in this case, it brings you up to John O'Donovan's uh, typescript of, of the name book. So you can, you can see here all the different um, options that um, they came across during the research, uh, the different spellings, the different sources, and some information on the townlands here. So it, it's very useful. And as I say, I like the way it's, it's presented together. So just number 12 is the census. Again, I won't spend too long on this because I say time is short. Most people probably are aware of the census um, that's been available for about 10 years or so. So you can search by name, by place, but it's also interesting that you can search the Irish census search forms, which were based on applications for the pension as a result of the Old Age Pension Act in 1908. So they basically had to go back and look at um, the, to prove their age, they had to go back and look at um, what had been entered in the 1841 and 1851 census. So all in all, it's, it's a way to get back really what was lost uh, for if you're lucky enough to have um, a, a kind of hit on that. So this is the 
National Archives website. And this is just searching a name by, by county and you just can press in both get the maximum uh, result. And like Gallagher will bring you up all the different townland names uh, divided by DD and by county. So there's, there's other ways to search the census. You probably know this, the browse by place option. Again, you can select all counties or whichever county you're, you're interested in. Um, and it brings you up the counties here. Again, select or click into one of those. Brings you to the DEDs. Again, select which one you're interested in, and it brings you to a list of the town. And very easy, very responsive, and a, a nice, clean uh, alphabetical list. So this is a slightly off-center one, and uh, just archaeology.ie. And um, really, it's what's it's not so much good for finding a particular townland, but it, it's very good for information about a townland, particularly um, because it is connected with the National Inventory of Architectural Heritage. So you can search by townland name. It doesn't say have a very good um, search facility, but you get, the maps are, are excellent. So the red dots uh, are bringing into monuments, which are pre-1700. The blue dots into items or uh, it's a whole range of items like churches and graves and vernacular houses uh, that are uh, of architectural heritage. So that's its homepage. Here, click into the historic environment viewer, and um, again, click it. That's where you, you you scroll in through there, and brings you to a map. You can put in a search option up here. You can put in a full name, or as I say, if you only have a small amount of letters, you can put it in. But as I say, it's not great as uh, giving a, a, a lot of options. So I just put in Inish Teague here brings me to a map of Inishteek, but you can see the maps are excellent. All the townlands are named. This is obviously the town of Inishteek. It's also bringing to a townland called Inishteek. So it's zoning in. I've zoned in here on the, uh, the actual village of Inishteek. A plethora of dots. Click into any of those. I've just selected one at random, and it just happened to be a coaching house from the uh, late 18th century. There's generally quite a few photographs and if you click into the, this option here, the main record, um, it brings you to more information about it. The, actually, the coordinates here. And I say there's a range of photographs. This is, this is like for a lot of different um, uh, geograph or sort of historic features. And it also gives to a description down here, description and appraisal of the actual uh, building. So again, very useful more about the information in the particular townland as opposed to just the actual search. Um, so quickly at the Ordnance Survey, very useful to look at different versions of the Ordnance Survey maps. So you kind of look through this, it's called a GeoHive, it's a type of map viewer. Um, it's, you do need to sign in again, it's one of these geographic information systems. I don't find a particularly easy website to search but it is worth persisting and it's definitely worth signing in. The, it seems to change quite a lot. Um, so the information can be slightly difficult to find the historical information. So this is its homepage. And if you scroll down to the very bottom of that homepage, get to historic maps, uh, click into that, gives you a list of the various ordnance survey um, uh, maps that were created and the dates. And you can click here in here to view like a list of the historic uh, maps uh, to see the archive. This is the way it's presented at the moment. When I looked at it six months ago, it was different. But anyway, it's 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 useful. This is Inish Teague as well. This is the kind of modern map. And then this looks back to 25 inch, six inch maps. And some of them are color maps are excellent. So it's very useful to compare modern and how things have changed over time. This is obviously in the kind of slightly urban setting, small village. And then the same would be uh, searchable for a rural area where you've got your townlands and just looking at the different townlands over time and then the different versions of the maps. So I won't spend too long on this, but these are really useful uh, as an early source. Basically the registry of deeds and um, all their memorials of deeds, conveyance and wills, 1708 to 1929 were photographed back in 1951. 
by the Church of the Latter-day Saints, the Mormon Church, and they are free and available to search on their website, familysearch.org. So you can go straight to Family Search and go and look at the memorials and deeds. And what's interesting about those is that you've got a grantor's index, which we won't be looking at now, but I just wanted to mention that there's no townlands mentioned in that index before 1833, but they have their own townland index. Uh, and the townland index is according, it's, it's alphabetical, but it's alphabetical only to the first letter, but it's still extremely useful as an early source. Um, the project that's to do with the Registry of Deeds Index project is basically providing finding aids to these memorials. It's totally volunteer run. Uh, it's uh, Ros McCutcheon, uh, she seems to be the lead contributor, has done some excellent work. And they, it's, it's the, there's, there's a lot of people involved. And basically, anytime they go and they look at a memorial, they extract the information and they put it up in the search for database. As I say, there's a lot more to both these than, than what I can cover in, in, at the moment. So just to quickly show you, this is the, the homepage of the Registry of Deeds Index project. So you've got your townland index here. And you can click in at the top here. So it's the Family Search Navigation Aid. Go to the townland index. You can then move over here and you select what county you're interested in and the dates. And you can see some of those are very early. So again, you know, there's not that many sources. Uh, at that early period. So just looking at that a, a little bit closer, it's just that's just a blown up image of it. So you can see the dates there for various counties. So you select, say, whatever you're interested in. I think I've just selected the first one, Antrim. That brings you to a alphabetical list. So you've got literally townland starting uh, with A in County Antrim. That's what I selected. Uh, it brings you to the imaged pages by the Mormons uh, back from 1951. And there you are, the county of Antrim, and then you've got your alphabetical listing. So it's really well worth. Um, it's time consuming to search because obviously it's just by A's, all the A's are mixed up together and the B's. But as I say, you know, it's going back to the early 19th or 18th century. So uh, it's definitely very usable or very, uh, very much of interest. That's County Carlo, slightly better writing. And um, it's also, you can have townland by barony. So there's a lot of different ways, both on family search. And um, the index project, to you can explore their websites. Um, so the other thing that they list streets and also interesting, they list some of the parishes that you can see here. So very useful. That that's just looking at the registry of deeds, the townland index. So literally you just go and put in the townland, or you put in a name that will bring up a list of townlands where that name has been extracted. So again, it's, it's, an, it's an excellent source and thank you very much to those volunteers. They put in a huge amount of work. Um, county libraries, I think time is running a little bit short, so I won't go into too much detail about this. Just basically to say county libraries are a fantastic source of information. Not all, but some have a specific townland index. Clare County Library has, a, has an excellent uh, resource and many other uh, county libraries do. To, but I'm aware time is a little bit short, so I'm not going to. I'm probably just going to slip over some of these. Um, um, you're 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 okay. Um, it's just five past. Uh, okay, five past okay. seven, Georgina. So okay, grand. No need to rush. I don't want to um, delay people too much, but um, just say the county libraries they are brilliant uh, and well worth a search. So this is just um, Clare Library homepage. Just clicking down here, genealogy and. Family history, that's what you select into. And um, as I say, a lot of resources on this website. And just for this purpose of this talk there, you've got a townland index. And um, that's what it brings up. So there's different options of the way to search here. It's alphabetically uh, arranged by parish. I think the next slide is just a it's just a, a blow up of that. So you can see there's the options to search there. There's also uh, 1821 list of freeholders for townland names. So they have also extremely good maps on this website. So you've got townlands here that are selected. Obviously, I could have picked any of these. And there's a range of map options also. So again, you scroll in to any of these, and it will bring you up to um, uh, whatever information they've got and links 
uh, to that townland. And this is just a different map option. This is the 1842. So you can see the Ordnance Survey map. So again, there's a lot on this website, but as I say, a lot of county line is still worth exploring. This is uh, number 17, it's the Down Survey Project uh, run by TCD.ie. And again, it's, it's really a useful source uh, because it's so early. And it's really looking at a lot of different, it's a GIS system, which is geographical information. So they're putting a lot of sources, contemporary sources from uh, around the latter half of the 17th century together. Uh, and basically it's, it's centered around the books of survey and distribution and the down survey. And it, it lists all the townlands which the people owned at that time. It's important to state that this is not a definitive source on 17th century townlands, but saying that it's extremely useful. They also provide a lot of the information that was have been extracted by the people in TCD uh, from the down survey. And what they've done to make it easy because the landscape has changed so much since the down survey was done, they have actually overlain the down survey maps with the Ordnance survey map from 1890. So it's actually quite easy to navigate between them. It's not unlike the source that some people might be familiar with, the Jan Goblet um, topographical index to the parish and townlands of Ireland, um, Sir William Petty's Barony maps, that was published in 1932 by the Manuscripts Commission. So just quickly looking at the maps, that's the down survey map at the back, superimposed with the 1890 Ordnance Urban Survey map. And press on any of those, this just happened to be in the Chitiga, of course I couldn't find it in the down survey, but when the 1890 Ordnance Urban Survey map superimposed on it, it brings it up if you know roughly where to look. And it also brings up all, all the information that's been collected by the people in TCD and extracted from the down survey. So extremely useful, user-friendly and free. Uh, number 18 is the public record of, of Northern Ireland, uh, and it can be found under this website here, Northern Ireland Direct. Um, so there's roughly 9,000 townlands are uh, uh, viewable on this website. It's extremely user-friendly, um, although it does have, say, a variant, a limited variant townland name search facility. The maps are fantastic on this website, and um, you could, you, could, you could lose a lot of time kind of just browsing between them and you can search by town and parish and city and like modern street dress. So that's just the home page there. You can click into the Pony historically mapped viewer and um, brings you up to the map of the counties of Northern Ireland. I'll say search facility isn't great, but you have all these options here on the right hand side of the various uh, Ordnance Survey maps. And again, you just scroll straight in if you want to just cruise around and browse various area if you know where to look. The maps, this is just an example of one of them. I think that's the 1832 to 46 Ordnance Survey map. So excellent, uh, really, it's, it's very good. Um, number 19 is google.com. I mean, sometimes it's the easiest thing to do. You've got a name you just don't know you just the first time you've heard it and you just put it into google it can be really good to locate just where the townland is then you can go back and search one or other of the the sources that we've just been looking at what's good about google is there's lots of different uh, search options satellite map terrain street view you can go and cruise around the actual townland uh, like a bird and that's you know fantastic really there's also which i didn't realize before i starting working on this talk there's a directions to and a directions from facility there's also coordinates and you can measure the distance in miles and kilometers that's if you right click on any google map with your mouse that's you can you can get those facilities so basically this is your right click this is just a map i was working on it's got coordinates here you just right click into it um, and you select measure distance and you go from there and you click to wherever you want and it gives you the distance in kilometers and miles. It's just very useful for working out, you know, how far the local town is or the church and what the area your ancestors might have been moving in. So useful, you know, nothing wrong with Google really once everybody is aware that there are other options to look at as well. So finishing up, basically, um, number 20 is the three uh, locations I've, I've listed here. 
So basically, if you can't find it, the townland after searching all those other databases and websites, go to the place names database of Ireland, the logon at dcu.ie. Now they are extremely understaffed. Really, I'm not recommending a flood of contact, just contact as a last resort. I've contacted them twice over 10 years. They've solved the mystery that I had and they were extremely helpful. They're also interested to know, uh, you know, what, what is this name that nobody can find. A local library archive, local genealogist, historian, they're usually extremely willing to help and in theory, very interested as well. So I hope that was informative and thank you very much. And sorry, I've gone a little bit over time. And um, I just, that's the, the list of sources. So that's available if anybody wants to take a screenshot or um, it'll be available as Elizabeth said on the YouTube channel. So thank you and over to you. That's, thank you very, very much, Georgina. Could I ask you just to stop sharing there, please? Okay. Um, when you're ready there. Great stuff. Thank you very, very much, Georgina. You'll be glad to know that there's plenty of compliments uh, right. and, and phrase uh, from the Q&A box during, uh, during your talk. Um, just going through one or two, uh, one or two things. Yeah, generally just brilliant. Thank you for a wonderful lecture. You made everything very clear. Uh, there is one question. Uh, do Irish language names of townlands create a further problem or are they just an embellishment in this context? Well, I wish I could answer that definitively. I don't speak Irish uh, and I wish I did, but I would think they are not an embellishment at all. They, they, the Irish understanding the Irish meanings of the, of the townlands provide a huge uh, insight into the origin of not all townlands, not all townlands are Irish in origin, but an, with an Irish translation, you can really understand and get a great grasp of what the actual terms mean. So I'm not sure if I've understood correctly, but you know, maybe an Irish language expert could answer that better than I could. Um, I feel it's a, it's a great loss not to speak Irish myself. I mean, I went through the Irish education system, but I, 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 don't, I don't speak Irish. Not to the extent I think that you would need to speak it to really understand the translations. And also that okay. Irish, English, English, Irish thing, like not all townlands as say are Irish in origin. So um, it's maybe the answer is a little bit more complex than I'm, I'm saying now, but as I say, I'm, I'm, I'm limited because I, I don't, I don't have good Irish. Um, there is a person here. Thank you for that, Georgina. Um, it said that townlands with good fertile land are smaller in acres than townlands with poor quality land. If you have any thoughts on that, is it a generalization or... Have you ever heard that? Yeah, I, I actually have. And I wish I could remember, but I think even today or certainly the last few days, I was just, you know, searching through various sources and I did come across that. Yeah. And right. um, there's some very good information on some of those um, websites that I mentioned, Loganham uh, and certainly the place mm. names of Northern Ireland. If you go into that land units, uh, option from the drop down menu they give very good information on the origins of all the different administrative areas and i think that's where i read it uh, okay. so i think there is there is truth in that okay um there is a question here how were the townland boundaries established well i mean it, townland that's getting into the history of, of, of townlands and is, is, you know you're getting into early medieval um well not so much early medieval but the anglo-norman uh, kind of establishment at that point uh, i would imagine that a lot of them were kind of family hierarchies and i i, I remember like in the past uh, i was amazed because i say i worked as an archaeologist and we did a lot of field walking and i had always thought a townland just was beside another townland and another townland and there was no physical distinction between them but around many townlands there are deep deep ditches 
uh, that are very difficult to cross. So, right. you know, I, I, I don't know the total origin of them all, but basically you're talking about, like it is the smallest unit in Ireland. So it probably mm -hmm. grew out of um, you know, kind of family holdings within a kind of chiefdom area. But it's, um, you know, the origins are, are complex. And actually, it's a different a question from a different person, but it's tied in with that. To what degree have the number of townlands changed over time? Well, I, I think you can see in that, that, that there's definitely a, a, a around, you know, you're really talking about 62,000, give or take a couple of hundred. But because you're dealing with different sources, I mean, that we, we've gone through, you can see you can see the complexity in it. And um, like some some people aren't going to count all those ones, the townlands that have ancillary names attached. Some people aren't going to count like the sub townlands. So like they they do change, especially when there's these large kind of changes in society with changes of parishes and boundaries of, of different areas. Like like e nearly every administrative unit has changed over time. And townlands are, I mean, they're, they're just no exception. Um, there's just a comment here that some townlands in the West could be half a mountain because of the poor land that would not be able to support a family. But where the land is better, less land was required to, to support families, of course. Um, just one or two co common questions here are similar in relation to the page with the, uh, the websites. Uh, just to uh, reiterate what uh, Georgina said, that uh, the, the, in a sense, online handout, a virtual handout, were on the slides that uh, Georgina finished up with. Um, this talk has been recorded, is being recorded. Um, so when the talk is made available on our YouTube channel, for people who want to check those websites, simply go to the end or towards the end of Georgina's um, presentation. I'm guessing the last couple of slides, uh, Georgina will provide the information. Uh, yeah. Obviously, I was looking yes, at the, the website that will provide this information uh, for, for people. This is in lieu, obviously, of handing an old school, yeah. uh, an old school handout out. Um, so they are on the slides of the presentation that is being recorded and which will be made available on our website, if not tomorrow, certainly um, early next week. Um, so yeah, just, sorry, just looking at again, a couple of questions in relation to that. Uh, and again, full of praise for a very comprehensive, excellent presentation. Um, and I would myself like to, to thank uh, Georgina on behalf of the, the National Archives for giving an absolutely riveting a talk tonight and um, I know myself that you know these talks require an awful lot of work an awful lot of effort to put in when you see that something is made to look so easy a uh, it's a testament very much to the speaker and to their expertise and their professionalism so I would like to thank Georgina not only on behalf of the National Archives but on behalf of all those who tuned in a uh, to us tonight we had a maximum of 102 people and I know that we were they were tuning in from all around the world. Okay. So we are very grateful to to people uh, for the uh, for the support. Um, we're currently planning our evening lecture series for 2023, and further details will become available in the next few weeks. But in the meantime, I'd like to thank you all for participating, not just in tonight's talk, but for tuning into our lecture series throughout the year. Your support is is always appreciated. It really is. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know people have busy lives and sometimes you get home after a busy, busy day in work and tuning in to a talk. Uh, I am always, um, I was really welcome and appreciate people's uh, support uh, and their enthusiasm and their dedication in their support of the critical work that the National Archives does. And also, of course, the work and the fantastic service that's provided by the genealogists uh, on our genealogy advisory service. Just a little plug there, it's free. It's staffed by a uh, constant professionals who are so generous and eager to share their expertise and their knowledge with uh, with people. Uh, so do come in, do visit us, do get us a, uh, get a reader's ticket. All our details are on our website, uh, www.nationalarchives.ie. 
And with that, uh, thanks again for joining us again. Thank you very much to Georgina, to my colleague, uh, Adam Condon, who provided uh, IT assistance um, in the background. Thank you very much, Adam. Um, and I wish you all uh, a lovely evening. Goramila Wahagov, Argus, Slongfold from Dublin. Iwa. Thank you. Thank you.